Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So as we consider Din Grogu's journey in Season 3 of The Mandalorian, there are a couple of things that we have to reconsider as part of our setup. One of them has to do with the fact that not as much time has passed since we met Grogu as we initially thought. We've discussed this on the podcast before, and we thought that there was a definitive answer when Jon Favreau gave an interview where he said that he believed time to be passing in The Mandalorian and, by extension, The Book of Boba Fett, in a similar way to time passing in our real world, which basically means that three and a half years would have passed from the beginning of Season 1 of The Mandalorian to the beginning of Season 3 of The Mandalorian. But it turns out that that is not, in fact, the case. According to Star Wars timelines, the enormous and definitive tome coming out from DK Publishing, according to that book, the Book of Boba Fett series takes place in 9 ABY, which is the same year that the first season of The Mandalorian is supposed to take place, which means the second season takes place during then as well. So then it becomes an open question of, well, how far in the future is season three from season two of The Book of Boba Fett and based on on the way that they've compacted those other seasons, the answer is probably not that much. Probably closer to 10 ABY if any time has passed at all. As far as Grogu's abilities go and how they developed over the course of Season 3 of The Mandalorian, it's not like he was really getting any training to further his Force abilities, so he's kind of more or less at the same place where he was when he left Luke Skywalker at the end of The Book of Boba Fett. Or I guess at the end of Chapter 6 of The Book of Boba Fett, which basically means that he's able to jump higher and farther, his reaction times are better, he was training with those little seeker droids, as you may recall. And as Luke and Ahsoka were talking about, what Luke had done was kind of just unlock some of the stuff that was already in Grogu's memory, things that maybe he had forgotten in what passes for him as the Dark Times. But we don't see a variety of different force powers used from him over the course of Season 3. For example, telekinesis we have seen from him previously, and it does look like he's a little more powerful with it. Think to that you know, crazy creature that jumped out and surprised him on Mandalore when he was rushing to get Bo-Katan to come rescue Din Djarin. Yeah, he just threw that guy... <laughs> like he was nothing. It's similar to what he was doing with the Stormtroopers at the end of Season 2 of The Mandalorian, but it d definitely seemed a little bit more definitive, and it also didn't seem to tire him out the same way that throwing the Stormtroopers around did. And the same goes for throwing bad guys around in the final episode of Season 3 of The Mandalorian, too. Then, of course, there's you know, related telekinesis stuff like making weapons slide away and blocking the you know, down thrust of one of the Praetorian Guard's blades. And this season, we didn't see him really performing any healing activity like he did in Season 1, for example, so we have no idea how that ability has progressed. Aside from his Force-using abilities, something that does seem to have developed since the last time we saw Grogu is his understanding of galactic basic language. Probably the prime example of this is when he and the Mandalorian traveled to Mandalore for the first time, and Mando was explaining what the deal was with the various planets in the system on the star chart, and then... <laughs> Once Mando gets captured by that crazy mech underneath, you know, the, in the depths of Mandalore, he's able to tell Grogu, go get Bo-Katan, and Grogu is able to leave and go, you know, communicate enough to R5-D4 to get to <laughs> Bo-Katan and help effect a rescue. He also clearly understands the concepts of yes and no. <laughs> with the use of that IG-12 mech suit. And he may be on the cusp of forming his own words, but yeah, we're probably not gonna see that until maybe season four, maybe season five, if they go that far. I mean, they're gonna get there eventually, right? You have to imagine that they're gonna have Grogu say something because then of course they can <laughs> sell Grogu merchandise where he talks and says a couple of interesting words. But I think the biggest thing to flag about Grogu and his development over the course of this third season and where he was when we last saw him is the fact that he is using the Force for knowledge and defense and not for attack. This is something that I mentioned in a previous podcast, but it is really worth flagging again because 
he was in a situation where he had every you know, reason to potentially do very bad things to those Praetorians and to Moff Gideon. We know that he knows how to force choke people. He did it to Cara Dune back in season one. So when he was locked in that command center room with those three Praetorian guards, I mean, I feel like he could have killed all three of them at any given moment, but he did not. And even when he showed up on the scene, like he could have force thrown all of them down that enormous empty shaft, basically, where all the starfighters are coming up from, and that would have done him in too. But he only attempted to evade capture and injury from those Praetorian guards. And then ultimately, when the Mandalorian came in to save the day, all he did was protect the Mandalorian. But his power in the Force certainly has grown. And I would say that that final scene with the enormous explosion from the capital ship coming down and the fireball that went toward him and Bo-Katan and Din, yeah, that situation is definitely a lot larger comparatively to the fire trooper, the incinerator trooper that showed up at the end of season one of The Mandalorian where he blocked the fire from that situation. This was a much greater conflagration that he protected himself and Din and Bo-Katan from then in, uh, in the end of season three there. And he also didn't get wiped out <laughs> in the same way that he got wiped out with the fire trooper, even though this was definitely a lot harder situation for him to deal with. He just kind of plopped down <laughs> like he was a little bit tired, but he didn't pass out. So I think that pretty much summarizes the growth of Grogu and what we learned about his abilities force-wise and otherwise over the course of Season 3 of The Mandalorian, and that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.